Friends, grace and peace to you, and welcome to worship this first Sunday of worship, our first Sunday of Advent at First Presbyterian Church of Taos. I'm going to invite the Aguirre family forward to light the first Advent candle, and I got my mythologies mixed up. Gideon is Gideon, not Gilead. You guys know that, but apologies, Gideon. Right, right. We're not in the Bible. We were in King Arthur, the bomb. <laughs> so. We look around and see how we are. The rich, rich get richer rich. and the poor get poorer. Yeah. How easy it for God's people to fall into despair. In the face of hunger, justice, and despair. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. Friends, be not afraid. God has spoken that hand. May the light May God's hope on earth is in Friends, join us, rise and join us in our opening hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, number 347.
and we may come and cut them to cruelty. Forgive us, rest our weapons from our hands, and show us how beautiful life can be when you forge them into instruments of abuse. Amen. Beloved, know this, the God of presence, the God of transformation, the God of peace hears our prayers and gives us the power to love. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, thanks be to God. others that will join that will announce later first announcement this morning you may have noticed our music situation is a little different um our organist is out sick please be in prayer for him uh and we got very little notice so mark who is a jack of all trades is directing and playing and singing and planning and uh just we are so grateful for you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. put up with my hand <laughs> Yes, I'll clap for that. So uh, in this age of COVID, we are so grateful for Mark and we ask for prayers for our organist. Um, before we get to the rest of the announcements, are there any visitors, first timers, folks who would like to introduce themselves? It's not required, but if you're new or visiting, we would love to be able to welcome you by name. You want to introduce yourself? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm Sandy Irby. I am your pastor's mother, and I am in fact visiting from Richmond, Virginia. And thank you for letting me bring this out here. <laughs> yes, I told her yesterday she was the liturgist. Uh, my whole family was here, but they had to. Several of them had to head back home. So you're to be here to stay. Right. Well, this is all I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. Any other visitors? Anyone who wants to introduce themselves? Would you guys like to? I'll introduce them. Yes. Um, we have a special soloist today. Her name is Soraya Lees, right here in the green. And this is her, what, Nat, right? Nate. Is Nate. This is Nate. And this is her grandmother, Brenda, over here. And they've already been to church over at uh, Guadalupe, but they've come over here to sing and support her today. So thank you all for that. Thank you. Welcome. We're so glad you guys are here. Anyone else? You all look pretty familiar. We're glad that you're here and we have exciting things going on. You'll see on the back of your bulletin. Um, next week is our alternative gift fair. You will also see the insert in your bulletin telling you what nonprofits will be here. Uh, you can, instead of a Christmas present, we all have enough sweaters. You can buy a uh, but give a present, a little card, a donation in honor of someone. Is there any more the mission team wants to say about that? I see here. Let me bring you the mic. Hello, hello. Oh, it's uh, we need a battery change. So you want if you just want to just speak loudly and Mark and I will all that the mission team. Oh no, no, So what we just like to say is 
Y'all come uh, next Sunday after church. That's where the refreshments prepared by the Presbyterian women are going to be. So for fellowship, it's going to be great. And I hope you'll maybe make a gift, you know, on behalf of somebody. But even if you look at this list and you say, I don't want to give you know, the prophets, I'm not going to give to them. Oh, you know. <laughs> uh, even if you say that, come and have some refreshments so that the Presbyterian women will not feel sad that their refreshments did not get eaten. And uh, have some fellowship and find out about it. So, thanks. Thank you. So, the first Presbyterian women, I believe, are making cookies. Oh, yeah. So, that if, if giving to your community is a reason not to show up, those cookies should be. Um, so, wonderful. Thank you, Carol. There's also the uh, on the other side of the insert. Saving paper, we have the St. Nicholas dinner, and I'm guessing Amy Jo. Oh my goodness, there she is. Let me spotlight your video real quick. We all appreciate that. Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith. All right, Mrs. Claus, how's it going? Oh, it's going well. Um, just a reminder we are six days away from our St. Nicholas dinner here at the church, 6 p.m. on Saturday. For those who are looking a little askance, we changed it from Friday, so please pay attention. It's Saturday, 6 p.m. Those of you who have volunteered to, to help set up, please be sure to be here about 4.30, 5 o'clock. We should be able to get it all put together in that amount of time. Uh, I'm still looking for just one or two people who have an extra tablecloth and some extra plates and silverware to help set up a table. Uh, otherwise, I think we've got everybody signed up. So just a reminder, this is a roast beef dinner, $5 per person. We're collecting payment at the door. Um, please invite your neighbors and friends. I just did, and I think they're coming. So we have plenty of room for all and plenty of roast beef. Uh, don't forget to bring your side dish, your salad, or your dessert. And those of you who have signed up to stay late to help me clean up, I will appreciate your help. My friend and able assistant, Lori Weber, is probably standing there, I can't see you at this point, standing there ready to pass around the last sign-up sheet for the St. Nicholas dinner. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you for Carol's, Santa Claus, oh, he's right behind me, and <laughs> dinner on Saturday. <laughs> So, oh, oh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> See you then. Lori just goes, Santa, I know. <laughs> yes. There is the clipboard. So, Lori, anything to say? Also, we have book group this Thursday at 5.30 for people that go to book group. So 5.30 Thursday the 1st. 5.30 Thursday the 1st. Wonderful. The, yes? Maybe in, in yes? Um, we had a big ad in the paper this week, and uh, it, was, it was really a beautiful ad. It was in the tempo, so if you want to save this week's tempo, the only problem is for the St. Nicholas, I was not able We able to change that date because it was already had a deadline. So just know that it is the third on Saturday and not the second. But save your tempo because it, it lists everything that's happening this this um, Advent season, all the people that are playing and singing and what she's talking about and preaching on, and also some other things which I think you'll mention in a minute. So Yes, there's all sorts of exciting things going on. The last announcement I've got for you this morning is that not next week, because next week we've got St. Nicholas and the gift fair, oh my, but the week after, December 11th, immediately following worship, we will have a very short congregational meeting. I'll try not to forget this time. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, to nominate, the nominating committee has a report for us. We have fabulous new deacons and elders. You will see them listed there. For elders, class of 2025, that's Libby Johnson, Linda Powell, and Zeke Tapia. 
For class of 2024, that's a two-year term that can be extended, is Joanne Ortiz. And class of 2023, that's one year, is Elisa, Lisa Lang, who's already been on for two years. So that's the one last year before she expires for us. Um, <laughs> and then as deacons, Wolfgang Collins and Sandy Lindman have both agreed to serve three-year terms. These are wonderful people. Your nominating committee has done a great job. And if any of y'all feel so inspired and want to, uh, to make a nomination from the floor, then that is those will also be accepted. That will be in two weeks. Uh, it'll be great fun. Anything else before we have the children's time? All right, then I would invite any children to come forward. Hello, how are you doing, Joshua? How are you doing, Gideon? Good. good. Did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you eat? Potatoes. Potatoes. I forgot one recipe. One more thing. Did you have Beans. dessert? Beans. Mm -hmm. How about dessert? Um, I mean, pies. Pies. Pie. Well, two pies, but there's one more thing. Two pies, one more thing. You remember it? No, it's for not for pies. Not for pies. But so we have to eat the pies. Yes. Well, that sounds like quite a feast. Did you guys eat a cookie? No. No. Who did the cookie? Our mom and dad. Your mom and dad. I bet they're great folks. Not too family. You guys, so it sounds like Thanksgiving was good. So today, you guys lit this beautiful candle. Thank you. Do you know what the candle's for? No. No. Well, that's a good thing to talk about. Today is the beginning of something we call Advent. Do you know what Advent? Have you heard that word before? No. 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 It was a long, a long word or a long time ago. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. That you heard it. So Advent is a word we use in church, and it just means coming. It means arrival. So the, we're waiting. We are waiting for the arrival of somebody. You know who who we're waiting for their arrival. Who comes at Christmas? Santa, Santa comes at Christmas. <laughs> who else comes at Christmas? Elves also comes at Christmas. A good Christmas. Uh, so this part is a little bit of a trick question, but it, it because he's already sort of come and he's always here. But whose birthday is Christmas? Bubba. Bubba? <laughs> <laughs> but does Bubba only get one round of presents? No, we get two. Oh, good. That's good thing to be Bubba. All right. So, no, who else is born on Christmas? Oh, uh, God. God, yeah. We I mean, call him Jesus in that iteration. Yeah. And so Jesus' Christmas is when we celebrate Jesus' birthday. And do you know how Jesus, since Jesus is God, how did Jesus show up? Did he come with like lots of trumpets and a fancy clothes? No. No, how did he come here? You know? A little baby. As a baby. He was born as a baby just like you guys were. Just like I was. Just like everybody here and on Zoom and all around the world came out as a little screaming, crying baby. So on Christmas, we are celebrating, for right now, we're starting Advent. And each Sunday, we'll light a candle all the way around. And on Christmas Eve, as we get ready for Santa and the elves, we'll light that middle candle. Because Jesus, the white one, we call it the Christ candle for Jesus. Because we're remembering that Jesus was born as a little baby in a stable surrounded by donkeys. Isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah. yeah, in a very, very ordinary way. God, the one who loves us and made us, came as just a little screaming, crying baby. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But it's also weird. It's also weird. You're right. Thank you for saying that out loud. You know, it is kind of weird. Because that makes God really small and really kind of vulnerable. You know what that word means? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you need a lot of things, it might be easy to get hurt because babies don't know how to walk. Yeah. They don't know how to eat. Yeah. They don't know much of anything. They don't know nothing. 
But that's how God comes to us as a little baby, just like all of us. So I'm going to let you guys go off to Sunday school with Stan. He's a, he always speaks there. But what is it we say first? The congregation said, May God be with you there. there. And we say, May God be with you here. Perfect. Thank you, God. Let us pray for illumination. Holy God, our hope and strength, by the power of your spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word, so that we may see the glorious signs of your promises fulfilled through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways that may, we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge from between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the life of the Lord. The word of our God. Thanks. Thanks. Our epistle reading today is Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of our God. It really doesn't need a microphone, but, it's a, but that's not for this church.
gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 26, verses 36 through 44. And now for something completely different. I misprinted that 24. I was thinking this can't be right. Chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Jesus is speaking. He's been talking about the end of the world and the coming of the Son of Man. And then he says, But about that day and that hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field and one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, praise, praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Keep awake, says Jesus. Wake up, says Paul. You know what time it is. Now is the time to wake from sleep. And so we begin Advent with some of my least favorite words in the English language. Stay awake. Uh -huh. Wake up. Y'all, I love to sleep. <laughs> and truly, I can sleep through anything. One alarm. Several alarms. Doors slamming. People shouting. Dogs barking. Truth be told, when I lived in Lima, Peru, I slept through not one but two earthquakes. So on this first Sunday of Advent, when many of us are still sleeping off our Thanksgiving food comas, I get a little grumpy when I hear Jesus, Matthew, and Paul all ganging up on us, banging on the bedroom door, telling us it's time to get up. It's jarring, isn't it, to begin Advent this way? with apocalyptic texts about the end of time and people being taken while working in the fields or grinding at the mill. Paul using words like licentiousness. And all the while this refrain, wake up, stay awake, be alert. Truth be told, we are a people living in a constant state of adrenal fatigue. Our nerves are shot. We've weathered pandemic wave after pandemic wave, crisis after crisis. If Paul or Jesus or really anyone is going to blast onto the picture this first Sunday in Advent, sounding the alarm and saying, wake up, it had better be for something good. That's the question, isn't it? Stay awake, be alert, stand at attention, but for what? 
What exactly is it we're supposed to be looking for? Matthew's Gospel paints us an apocalyptic picture, calls us to look for the coming of Christ. Advent, remember, arrival, coming. Christ is coming, so be ready. But here's the thing about this text from Matthew. We have all been conditioned by one rather loud segment of the conservative evangelical Christian movement to read this scripture in one way. A story about the rich. You've probably heard this, this interpretation. Maybe you even saw that horrible movie, Left Behind, starring Kirk Cameron, bless his heart. As the story goes, before Jesus returns, everything is going to get really bad here on earth. But don't worry, because before the world goes to hell in a handbasket, Jesus is going to rapture or snatch up all the good people. They'll go to heaven and be with Jesus. And then just the bad people, self-included, will be left on earth to deal with all the trials to come. When we put on these goggles, these glasses, rapture goggles, and read this, we hear the story of the two men working in the field or the two women grinding at the mill. One is taken, one is left. And the message is, don't get left behind. This one way of reading has so dominated the conversation about this kind of scripture for the last 50, 100 years, that even those of us who don't believe in a so-called rapture will read this text and that's what we hear, right? Even if we just kind of shrug, shake our heads and turn the page, it's there deep in our psyches. Don't get left behind. That's what we think the scripture is about. But what if we've been reading it wrong this whole time? What if Christ is urging us and all the disciples to stay awake and alert so that we don't get taken or swept away? What if it is the faithful disciples who are left at their work? Many biblical scholars actually read this text and they point to this alternate reading. They say, look at the illustration that Jesus uses of Noah and the flood. In this story, the quote unquote good people are kept in the ark while the wicked people get swept away. And we are called to be like Noah and his family, the ones who stick around. And after the rains have come and gone, who disembark and live their ordinary lives as part of God's new creation. These same scholars look at the whole of Matthew's gospel and other parables like the wheat and the tares or the fish in the net. And in these parables, it's the bad stuff that is taken. The tares that are collected from the field and burned. The flotsam and the jetsam that are gathered out of the net and discarded. The good stuff, the wheat, the fish, is left behind. And then finally, there are the words itself. One will be taken and the other left. Jesus' disciples, and especially Matthew's readers, would have been familiar with people suddenly being taken, and it was not a good thing. By the time Matthew is writing, the early church had seen many of their number taken, arrested, abducted, detained by the Roman military, being left behind, it's a much better fate than being taken away. 
So what if we've been reading it wrong? What if the point is to stay awake and alert, to watch for Christ's coming, not so that we are lifted up somewhere else, but so that we stay right here? How would that change the way we live this Advent season? I think it might direct us to focus on incarnation, on this world, these bodies, this life we are living. I think this Advent call to attention could help us to start paying attention to those things Jesus loves the most, the people around us, the world that God so loved. Look up, open your eyes, pay attention, see where God is around you right here in this moment. On this first Sunday of Advent, what if we looked for Christ, not in the clouds and not yet in the manger, but here around us and one another? Christians often talk about how there are two Advents. There's the birth of Jesus and then the final Advent at the end of time when Jesus comes in the clouds. But there's a 12th century French mystic, Bernard of Clairvaux, who wrote that there are three Advents. First, the incarnation. Finally, the consummation. And then, now. Here the middle, where we look for the everyday arrival of Jesus, even in our ordinary mundane lives. Light shines in darkness. We visit the sick. Hungry people are fed. Wake up. Pay attention. Christ is coming, and this is what it looks like. I wonder, where do you see this mundane advent on earth as it is in heaven, right here, right now? I'll tell you two places I have seen it just this past week. The first was in our Thanksgiving dinner for the men's shelter. You may remember that in worship last week, we announced that a local grocery store was covering Thanksgiving, so we were off the hook. And that was true, mostly. <laughs> but after we made that announcement, we actually found out the grocery store was providing the food, but we still needed someone to cook it. Whoops. One of the members of the mission team made a few calls, and several of y'all said, yes, of course. Yes, I can do some extra cooking on Thanksgiving. It didn't phase you. You were awake. You were alert. You were prepared, ready for Christ to show up in the ordinary. You answered your phone. You turned on your stove. You prepared the way of the Lord. A second place where I saw this very mundane coming of Christ was on Wednesday. When in our back building, I met Catherine Hummel from Dream Tree to do a walkthrough of the space as we prepare it to become an emergency shelter for the homeless on cold nights this winter. You all may remember a few months ago, I mentioned that several of the homeless organizations in town have got together and they're working on a shelter building that will be ready next year, but it's not ready yet and it sure is cold. So they've been looking at several options and they wanted to know, could we be one? Your mission team met with Kim from Carter Taos and brought it to session and your session unanimously voted yes. That's what we're called to do, to open up our home to the homeless. You, the church, were awake 
You, the church, were alert. You, the church, were ready and had paved the way so that when Catherine called me and said, we will need your space starting in December, all I had to do was say, sure, come on over, take a look. I saw Christ coming this week as Catherine and I walked through bathrooms, went over thermostat functions, worked out liability insurance. As we talked door access codes and where is the best place to set up the check-in desk, thought of that innkeeper in the Christmas story, making room in the stable for the Christ child to be born. The ordinary making way for the extraordinary. There may be great flashes of light someday, signs in the sun, moon, and stars. About that day and hour, no one knows, not even the sun. But today, there are hungry people and they need a warm dinner. Today, our homeless siblings are cold and they deserve a warm place to sleep. So friends, stay awake, be alert, pay attention. Christ is coming, this we know, right here, right now, in this world, in this flesh. The kingdom of God begins in the mundane. Thanks be to God. And Friends, I invite you to rise in body, spirit, or both and join in hymn number 97. Watchmen tell us of the night. <laughs>
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. and tasty goodies in just a few moments. But as we do connect our those worshiping here and those remotely bring you, we see Jim and Colleen and uh, Amy Jo and Colin and Lynn Copeland on Zoom. Peace be with you. On Facebook, we see Tina and Francis Trujillo, Deidre and Jolie Hughes, and Boyd Earl. Peace be with all of you. As we share Christ's peace, let us pray. Gracious God, you come to us, even here, even now. You come to us when we are tired, when we do not want to wake from sleep. And yet you bring good news, good tidings of great joy for all people. You come to us in places torn apart by war, violence, oppression, grief. You're born among the poor, among the hungry, the homeless. You come to us in a human body, even as we are sick and injured, even as we age, even as we struggle with the difficulties of being flesh, you know them. So God, we pray for those we love, who are sick, who are in need, who are hungry, who are homeless, who live in violence, addiction, mental illness, fear. God, we pray for our world and our community. We pray for all of creation. For those people this Thanksgiving who are lonely or grieving lost loved ones. For people overjoyed with the joy you bring us. God, we lift up to you now and in silence and aloud the joys and concerns of our hearts this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray? I continue to lift up Danny as she waits to see if her cancer has metastasized or her carries her thoughts. We continue to pray for Gilda's friend, Danny waiting to hear about possible spread of cancer. God, in your mercy. Pray, pray for my father who is recovering from the stroke. And also for the people of Ukraine who are suffering at a man's will. Pray for Alvaro's father recovering from a stroke and for the people of Ukraine and their suffering. God, in your mercy. Pray for our son, Charlie, Pray for Lisa and Kurt's son, Charlie. He is looking for an open door for the right job. God, in your mercy. There's the real neighbor, um, Bill, who's suffering from Tourette's and associated seizures after um, visiting ambulance drives from hospital back and forth this week. Pray for Joya's neighbor, Lola. No. Dealing with seizures related to Tourette's and ambulance drive. God in your mercy. Your prayers. 
We should pray for our country that we can return to being a country of civility with respect for each other, regardless of our political or religious views. Prayers for our country that we can be a place of civility and respect for people of all political and religious views. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Pray for my friend Pam having hip replacement tomorrow. God in your mercy. Pray for my girl Heiser that he continues to get strength in her. Pray for my girl Heiser continued strength and healing. God in your mercy. Yes. Prayers of thanksgiving for Mark and music and for Stan and his great, great work with the children. God in your mercy. Prayers for Margaret, Joanne's friend, who will go and undergo surgery on Wednesday. God in your mercy. Prayers for Dan, our organist who is sick. God in your mercy. We lift up all these prayers of God, words spoken and words unspoken. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory friends as we receive our morning offering i'll tell you the happy news that we are now 94 percent of the way to our pledge goal so i'm almost ready to shut up about it but for those last six percent if you haven't turned in that card put it in the plate, send it to the church. Thank you for all your gifts. Let us give back to God.
place into your ordinary lives and expect to see Jesus. Go forth to look for the coming of Christ in your family, in the food pantry, in every place you go. Go forth in hope that God's future begins now in our present. And as you go, may joy and nothing less guide you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified, risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Amen. Go with